I have been very fortunate to come to Saudi Arabia and get a chance to visit three different cities, Jeddah, Riyadh, and I'll be going to Dhafran. And we've talked a lot about uh, the things we have in common, right? Now we have a Saudi space agency. We have a space agency in common. I had a chance to be interviewed on the radio show Caffeine which is, uh, from what I understand, a, a nationwide morning show. And uh, that was really fun to get to talk to folks when they're just waking up. And I also was uh, able to hear some of the more popular radio uh, songs that are out right now. Uh, another highlight was the chance to speak at Dar al-Hekma, a women's university in Jeddah, who's also at the start of having their own engineering curriculum. And we had an audience, even though they were in the middle of finals, of about uh, 50 to 60 young women. And they, it was fun to tell them stories of space exploration and Mars exploration. But what was really a highlight was the opportunity to tell those when the Saudi Space Agency has just formed so they could actually see themselves in their own country doing something like that if it interested them. And their questions were quite remarkable uh, because it was clear that they were thinking along these lines. And seeing them so interested in engineering and science uh, was very um, rewarding and hopeful for seeing that the Saudi Space Agency is going to have a pool of talent uh, like they will need from right here within the country. So I have had the opportunity to be a part of many amazing moments in the robotic missions that I've worked on, but I would have to say that some of the coolest are landing day, when a robotic mission that we're sending to Mars actually lands. The signal from Mars to the Earth can take anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes to get here. So when we are sitting in mission control, waiting to see if the landing happens successfully, we are waiting, sitting on pins and needles, and those moments are particularly memorable because you're waiting with your team. You're waiting to see if a group of people that you work together with to do something hard, if that succeeded. The message there is yay. Right? We need more girls around the world to get involved in science, technology, engineering, and math. So many of our jobs today require a literacy in science and math. I mean, everyone's daily life requires a literacy. I would also say that you're going to encounter people who say, the girls don't normally do that. Why do you want to do that? That's hard. There are other things you can do. But if you're interested and you want to do that, don't let anybody tell you that you can't, because you can. And we need you to believe in yourself, to make sure that you talk to other people that support you. For every person that says you can't do it, there are going to be five people who say you can. So humans, we are hoping to send an international mission to Mars that NASA will be a part of definitely in hopefully the next 20 years or so. And humans will be walking on Mars, hopefully following in the footsteps of some of the robotic missions that we've sent. We do have work to do before we can send people. We need to know what they're going to breathe, what they're going to eat, where they're going to live. All of the things that you need when you set up a research base somewhere for the first time. So there's a lot of work to do uh, as well as we need spacesuits for Mars. We need to understand the radiation environment. So the robotic missions like the Mars Exploration Rovers are setting the stage for that. Uh, but we certainly hope that there will be humans on Mars in the next 10, 20 years. And so maybe that future astronaut on Mars is listening to this video right now. Space is part of our future. It's also already part of our past. We've had people walk on the moon. And the Apollo program, the, when the United States said, we're going to do something, and we're going to do something in 10 years, and developed all of the technology necessary to send people to the moon, that technology had so many benefits on the Earth that they've just become a part of us. And that legacy of being able to benefit on the Earth 
from what we learn from space exploration continues in very varied ways. Right now, uh, we've had astronauts that have been on the space station for an entire year. And when they have come back, we've been able to see the medical impacts of being in space for that long, some of which are things like bone loss. And what we're learning about how to help astronauts that might have experienced some minor bone loss in space is actually helping with osteoporosis, something that elderly uh, people on Earth always go through. So again, the connection is there. But exploring space is not just about what benefits, but also about exploration and about reaching out. We didn't know until we started these robotic explorations of Mars that we were going to find out that Mars once had water that Mars had oceans, just like the Earth does. And what we learned from that is that planets can change. Cl planets can be one way and then change to be much more like Mars is now, which is not hospitable, dry, cold, lifeless. So I think a message that every person on the planet, on this planet, should be aware of is we need to take care of the Earth. We're very lucky to have a planet that is so delicately balanced for life. And planets can change. We need to take care of this one.